We're here in Chicago at Light Reading's inaugural big telecom event, and I'm here with Sandra Rivera, Intel's Director of Market Development. Sandra, we're in a very transitional period from data center to these new technologies like SDN and NFE. My question to you is, where does Intel stand in that environment? Sure. Um, well, in fact, we're probably halfway through a decade-long transformation that's been happening in the network. If you really take a look at how long uh, these types of fundamental architectural changes take place, it, it takes place in, in measures of you know many years, and um, and we're pretty excited by all of the activities and the real momentum that has happened in the last couple of years with the advent of the Network Function Virtualization uh, Forum uh, out of the Etsy group and a lot of the uh, proof of concepts and the specifications that have been um, that have been the output of that effort. But again, it really has been something that's been a long time coming, really anchored in server uh, volume economics and virtualization technology, which have been well established in the data center and in the cloud for over over 10 years. Um, from our perspective, we are fully committed to seeing the realization and the deployment of NFV and SDN-based solutions in, in the network, and we have a number of technology innovations, uh, ecosystem enabling uh, investments, and commitment to industry standards to make that happen. Great. My second question is sort of a two-parter. First of all, what are some of the market drivers that have dictated Intel's strategy and number two, what are some of the potential roadblocks and challenges you've faced along the way? Yeah, so let's talk first about some of the things that Intel is doing specifically. And I, I mentioned uh, you know, three areas that we really are committed to. First is in technology innovation. Uh, the second around uh, investment in ecosystem enabling. And the third are investments and contributions to industry standards efforts. If you look at a technology, from a technology perspective, we continue to invest in microarchitecture improvements, and of course, we are the world leader in process technology, currently running uh, you know, volume on 22 nanometer, moving to 14 nanometer uh, soon, which of course gives us a much better power and performance footprint for all of our uh, processors and, and chipsets. Um, but in addition to the things that we would do to borrow from the server and virtualization technologies and, and cloud technologies that uh, that we're leaders in, we do some specialized capabilities for communications networks, uh, special I.O. capabilities and, and bandwidth requirements that are uh, prevalent for communications workloads, uh, requirements for um, different types of packet processing throughput, advancements that we've made in, in now being able to run as much as 250 million packets per second of uh, layer three forwarding traffic on a single uh, processor core. So some, some a lot, you know, a lot of innovation and investment goes into making general purpose processing technology more applicable for communications network uh, workloads and applications. From an ecosystem perspective, we have a network builders uh, ecosystem community. Uh, we launched it just last September at the Intel Developer Forum uh, in San Francisco. We started out with uh, two dozen companies. We're up to over 70 companies, all the major so solution providers in communications networks, in addition to many new hot new startup companies and, and innovators. So we're pretty excited about the ability to bring together a broad community of ecosystem um, uh, contributors and a much broader market participation in terms of providing solutions for, for the network. And then uh, when we look at the industry standards uh, efforts, we are fully committed to the Etsy NFV uh, ISG. Uh, we have many contributions there on the four work groups as well as the two expert teams. We have key contributions into OpenStack that we're making for the management and orchestration uh, elements of, of a complete solution. Uh, Open Daylight, we're a silver member there uh, today. And then many contributions as well to IETF and the Open Network Foundation. Really just uh, speaking to the need to have a set of standards for interoperability and to really enable the, that broad ecosystem to come to the table with solutions. Thanks. Can you sort of give me an idea of how Intel sees itself differentiated from some of the other uh, players in the market? Yeah, I believe Intel has a unique role that we play in the market. Um, we really act much more as a technology advisor, uh, of course, directly with our customers, but also with our customers' customers, the communication service providers. And um, in a way that allows us to expose really the, the nuances and the capabilities and the underlying 
uh, silicon and software and gradient technology that we provide that the service providers can take advantage of that would bring benefit to both their enterprise and consumer customers. And in that way, um, we don't provide finished solutions, but having the ingredient technology and really articulating and, and doing the technology and commercial pathfinding for the art of the possible and what can you do in networks that you couldn't do before when, once you introduce programmable computing in parts of the network that didn't exist. I think it's a pretty exciting role for us to play and something that uh, we're fully committed to in terms of realizing the promise of NFV and SDM. Great. Well, Sandra, thanks for your time. Thank you.